All right, all right, y'all. What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Lockout Men Podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And today we have a special guest in the building. Well, what's going on, y'all? My name's Lockout Men. And uh, of course, this is Lockout Men Podcast Show. And in today's interview, we have a young gentleman that only been in the game for a couple of months. So he's going to come on and share his experience so far. He's a, he's a company driver for Swift Transportation. So we're going to see uh, we're going to see how all that is about. So I would like to welcome to the show, Mr. Trucker Doc. Whoops, wait a minute. We're going to try that again. Take two. <laughs> I'd like to welcome to the show, Mr. Trucker <laughs> Doc. All right, all right, bro. What's going on? How you feel today? So what's up? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good today. All right, all right. So I, I, I think uh I think I found you uh on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. Uh you're brand new to YouTube and you're brand new to the game. So what you you started your YouTube around the same time that you started your career in trucking? Yeah, uh, so I started my YouTube kind of like to give everybody kind of document my journey. You know, since it's a new career that I'm doing, I just kind of wanted to ten twenty years down the road look back and be like, oh yeah, I remember that. You know, that's that's what it was for me for YouTube, man. Just to just to have a, a archive of of what I did, you know, what I've done in the past. But of course, you know, my my channel has flip flop, flip the script, and now it is what it is today, man. Yeah. But for everybody else that's coming into this game, you know, especially into this YouTube game, and you know, just for somebody just to document their journey and all like that and not look at it as a business then that's a pretty cool thing man that's a pretty cool thing um all right so give me a little bit of background about yourself man tell us about yourself twenty seven I currently live in Phoenix but you know I'm from Michigan moved out to Phoenix Arizona a couple of years ago uh I got a kid, you know, so I'm just not trying to provide, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Michigan, huh? Well, what was life life back up? Was it what you stayed in a major city? You stayed in a small town? Uh, what was life like for you back up in Michigan? I wouldn't say it's like a major, uh, big city. It's kind of like one of those mid cities. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, but like Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, familiar it's, it's with that. West of Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I lived there. To me, living there was kind of like I was being stagnant, so I needed, I needed change. That's why I ended up moving, you know, to uh, Phoenix. You know, there's always something to do there. Um, you're never bored. You know, it's always something, new experiences that you can experience. In Michigan, you really don't have that. You have, you know, the city and then farms. That's pretty much it. Okay, okay. Well, you know, they they say uh especially over in Detroit. Did you uh I'm a gambler, so I've been up I've been up to Detroit a few times to uh to play at uh MGM Grand and over there at Motor City. Um have you uh have you took part in in the casino life up there? Uh we had our little our own little casinos um close to Kalamazoo Fire Keepers. I used to go there. Oh, okay, fire keepers. I'm familiar played, with that. Yeah, I played right, there. I, I, I think, yeah, I part in fire keepers. That was my little. Uh, that was my little spot. Oh, okay, yeah, fire keepers. That's not a. That's not a bad little spot right there. They got a nice little poker room. That's why I, uh, I had a delivery up there, and I looked at my uh, Bravo app, and I happened to see that it was a couple of games going up there, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, nice little statue. They got like like the little fire birds 
bronze birds or something like that on the on the outside. So yeah, that's pretty cool, man. All right, so you so you decided to move from Michigan. Yeah. Uh, did did you have a did you have a little family? Did did you have a little family before you moved uh before you moved to Michigan, or it was just you? It was just you yourself that moved to Michigan. I mean, moved from from Michigan. Yeah, well, my uh, my my mom and my sister, we all grew up, in, uh, we all lived in Michigan. My sister had ended up moving to Arizona like a couple years before. She came, she came to visit. You know, she was like, "Hey, I think you would do really good in Phoenix. You know, why don't you just come out?" Next thing I knew, I was buying a plane ticket and just went out there on a whim. Oh man, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. And uh, how long you been in uh, how long you been in Phoenix so far? Uh, I moved to Phoenix January of 2019, so just over a year and a half. Oh, okay. Now, what made you now after now you got into trucking before or after you moved? After, way after. I got I got into trucking. Uh, well, I've always wanted to do it. I always wanted to get my CDL, but I always thought that it was too unattainable. Uh, especially like with trucking school and the prices and everything. Right. Uh, it just it, it it wasn't a right time for me to do it back in the day. So, you know, it's it's always been in the back of my head, like, oh yeah, I really want to do this, but you know, I just gotta work towards it. Do you know, uh, I found Swift. You know, they mm -hmm. they do the the paid. Yeah, they do the paid CDL training. I'm like, oh, this is not the perfect time, especially with everything going on. I got laid off. Mm -hmm. on my job because of the coronavirus and everything so i'm like oh it's the perfect time to just go ahead and jump into it okay okay yeah that's how i think that's how it was for me back in the day you know i felt that getting my cdls was unattainable because of the because of the cost and everything but i did my research back then i knew that i didn't want to go through uh a truck sponsor school because i didn't want to be locked down but um it was in the back of my head. Years pass, situations pass, life pass. Um, then me and, uh, of course, you know, everybody heard my story. Me and my wife got separated, and uh, and yeah, that's when I went on ahead and uh, took my last credit card, took that last five hundred or five thousand and some change, and and five years later, I'm here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So for you, you know, you, uh, you, you was um, where where you was working at before you was before you was let go because of the because of the uh, pandemic. Call center, uh, Best Western uh, call center. You know, I'm making reservations and handling customer complaints mm -hmm. uh, for their properties uh, worldwide. So now that call center, they're like a breeding ground for diseases and, and, right. and all that stuff. So. All right, so you so this is so this is what a nine to five sitting in the cubicle, uh, waiting for somebody to call in and and so forth and so on. You take your hour lunch, get back at it, and what you leave at five? Yeah, just like that, just like that. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. But now very, that very very stagnant, you know. Now, now that the pandemic hit. You know, they, they, they did what to you guys? Just just up and laid y'all off or or gave y'all some severance pay? What yeah, they let go of they let go of seventy five percent of their employees because the hotel business really got hit hard. Mm -hmm. You know, because no nobody was traveling. So they really got hit hard, so they let go of seventy five percent of their uh employees and unfortunately I was one of them. Um, but I you know, I see it as a one door closed, another door open. Right. Opportunities. Opportunities. That's 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 all that that's all it is yeah, out here. Definitely. You know, you you know that one opportunity closed, another opportunity open for you. And uh fortunately the opportunity for you was uh was trucking. So you felt that it was the right time to uh get into trucking. What was uh what was your experience uh going through the whole uh school process with uh with Swift Transportation? It was different, uh, just because I wasn't used to to everything that they were talking about, and you know, at that point, I was getting frustrated because I couldn't get it. 
Uh, but, you know, they, they Swift works with you. I don't know about any other certain company, but, you know, at least Swift, they, you know, they work with you. They let you know, hey, you know, it happens to everybody. Just don't beat yourself up about it. You know, you'll get it. It just clicks. And all of a sudden, one day, it just clicked for me. I'm like, oh, yeah, getting my maneuvers down, like not even having to think about it, just, just doing it. Did, so for me, it was a good experience. Did they? You know, teachers were good, instructors were good. Did they did they train you in a in a in a manual or was it all automatics? Uh, they actually trained us in all automatics. So yeah, I do have that automatic restriction on my CDL, um, um, but I do plan on getting that removed. Um, I just want to get some more experience uh, under my belt uh, before I go ahead and, and start to learn the uh, manual. All right. So you you chose Swift because of the, because of the school. And, and of course, now that, you know, you got your license room, you're, you're obligated to, uh, what, what is it? A year, a year with them, the, 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 the pay off the schooling. So what it is, is it's, it's not a contract like Swift. They don't have a contract for your employment. Mm-hmm. You do sign a contract with the school. What what happens is if you stay with Swiss for a year, you don't have to pay for the school. So they they end up taking eighty eight dollars out of your check every week for a year, um, and then they end up paying you forty forty dollars back. So you're really paying only half of the school. If you stay with them two years, they end up paying you back for the school. So you basically if you stay with them two years, you get the school for free. Oh, okay, um, so they now, so it's to go to a different company. So it's it's like, I right, let me see if I can see if I can see if I can like look at it at a at, out, out the glass a little bit. So because of all the situations that was happening with with not only Swift because a couple of other trucking companies is doing it this way too. So back in the day, you know, companies will pay for your license up front and then you would sign the contract saying that, okay, I'll drive for a year, uh, uh, 12 months, 24 months, and then bam, bam, boom. And then you'll be obligated to that company. So let's say if you decide to leave said company, you wouldn't be able to get in with another company because they're holding back your experience. So now I think it was a couple of lawsuits later, right. a couple of lawsuits later, uh, I think Swift had a lawsuit with that. CRST had a lawsuit with that. I think it was CRST and Swift because CRST was hiring Swift drivers away from them. And I think Swift kind of like got into a tizzy about that. So now <laughs> they switch. They they flip the script on you guys by saying, "Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to pay for your license, but in actuality, you're paying for your license because if you decide to quit, you see what I'm saying? If you decide to quit, then." They'll stop taking payments out of your checks because you're no longer with the company. So now they'll just they'll just send it to a billing company and then they'll just bill you the rest. But like you just said, if you stay with the company now, now it's what, two years now. So if you stay with the company for two years. Yeah. So the first year. Mm hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, so the first year you pay you're gonna pay half but half of that half of that off. Um at the end of that first year, Swift pays the rest that you owe. Um if you stay with them a full two years, Swift ends up reimbursing you the whole the whole six thousand that you um, that they charge for the school. Okay, okay. Within, within that year. You know, a lot of companies is going that route. But I I don't think that Swift yeah, I don't think Swift pays for it because uh, we had to sign a contract with a, a finance company. It wasn't uh, Swift that we had to sign a contract with. Okay, see that's that's what I was that's what I was just saying. See that finance, like if Swift is paying 
it's paying, you know, like you just said, it's paying half. You get forty dollars back, and they pay, they take eighty eight dollars out of your check, and then they give you the forty, and then they'll pay the forty eight. But if you decide not to continue with the company, then that finance company that you signed off with is going to continue coming after you for the rest of the money. I think that's a, I, you know what? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Basically, just like any. Any finance companies, like credit cards and shit like that. And I, I think yeah, that's. Yeah, it's just like any, yeah, any credit card. They're going to come. They're going to get their money. I, I think that's a good idea. I, I think, you know, I, I think that's a good idea. It don't put the stress on, you know, on the new driver because, you know, some, you know, back in the day, companies that did that would only pay you guys like X amount of cent per mile. Like I heard back in the day, uh, what was that? Uh, Stevens Transport only paid their new drivers that came out of school the school that they paid for, they was only paying them like 17, 18 cent a mile. And these times you you really can't Ooh. live you, you really can't live off of that, man. You you really can't. So that's why a lot of drivers no. that's why a lot of drivers was up and leaving. You know, they felt that they was getting jaded by said companies. You know what I'm saying? Companies like CRST that would give you like 30 cent a mile, but only give you bullshit miles. You know, they won't give you they won't give you the miles right. to to make a living off of. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So I, I think that is a good idea to just just sign off with a finance company so that you won't be limited to the company that, you know, that that brought you on in the first place. If things don't go right. You know, if yeah. things don't go right and things started to go left. Then you could you could take your CDLs elsewhere without without no hindrance from the company. Like okay, well we're not going to give them your uh, your experience. We're not going to give them the information about your experience because you're still under contract with us. You see what I'm saying? So that's a good idea. That's right. a good idea. That is a good idea, man. All right, so. How long you uh how long you been rocking out with uh with Swift, man? Uh, how long all together? Uh so with the school, the month, so about three months, three and a half. All right. I had to do well, four months. Yeah, because I had to do a month with uh with the mentor after right. after I graduated uh from the school. All right. New Jack up in the game. New Jack up in the game, man. That's what's up. New Jack up in the game. So with the mentor, what was what was the experience like with uh with with the mentor, man? Did he did he train you well? You you felt that you got trained good by him? What 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 was your experience with that? Um, it was a new experience. Uh I don't at first it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. He wasn't training me, he wasn't teaching me how to back me. Uh I finally I I saw I saw Swift, I'm like, hey, I need to do something. Cause he ain't teaching me nothing. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on his truck to learn how to how to do this shit, and he he, he just going ahead and, and doing it. He was taking uh, it. So they ended was... up calling him and talking to him, and then at, from yeah, yeah, he was. He was taking advantage of driver, you. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was taking advantage of you. Was was he a yeah. was he a lease fun. driver? He had to be a lease driver. No, he was company. Oh, he was company, and he was treating you that way. Yeah, yeah, it was something. Oh. Um, like I said, ever since I ever since I had called Swift and they talked to him, like everything had changed. Like he started teaching me stuff and actually going through stuff and teaching me the math and everything. So like the end of my mentorship, like it was better than the beginning of it because I was about ready to get off the truck. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, if y'all don't do nothing, I'm about to get off the truck. So uh, they was like, hold on, just uh, give us a minute. We'll call him and talk to him, and you know they they got it right. He, I, I don't even think they should have even went that route, especially if he was about if, if he was about training. A lot of these trainers that comes in with these different companies and all like that, majority of them isn't about training you guys. You know what I'm saying? Majority of them is about taking advantage of you yeah. guys just to get the you know just to get the additional money that they get paid for training you guys. And I see that a lot on the lease side right. of things. 
You know what I'm saying? These lease drivers, they get in these high price lease uh, agreements with these companies. And then they realize that they're not making enough money. So now they're going to train. Then, you know, they're training these they're training these new drivers only for the money. And it's not, you know, it's not conducive to the driver because they're not they're they're not training you right. You know what I'm saying? So I always felt that right. a company driver would be best fit, but by the sounds of it in the beginning, you had to you you had to you had to put the scare in this guy, like, yo, bro, you ain't training me nothing. But you said at the end of the at the end of the period, it was it was pretty good though. Yeah, it's like the first first week, week and a half, I'm like, okay, maybe he's just tired because he had just, you know, he'd been on the road. So I'm like, okay, let me give him a couple of days, you know, see if maybe it get better. Um, didn't get better, so I, you know, switch. they told us, you know, if you have any problems with your mental or anything, give us a call. So I called them, told them what was going on. But like, I told them, like, hey, I'm, like, so close to just jumping off this dude's truck and just, you know, going somewhere else. Uh, they were like, no, nah, don't do that. You know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. We'll talk to him. They called him, talked to him. I don't know what they said to him, but ever since they talked to him, you know, he had started showing me stuff, started showing me back in the movies, little tips and tricks and stuff. Uh, uh, he, yeah, the, got, la- the last two weeks of he, my mentorship was smooth. He got he got off his ass. <laughs> All right, so you uh, so you up, <laughs> so you upgrade. Now you're now you're official. Uh, you're official. So about a month out. What what lanes? What what route you driving? Because before you came in, you said you was on your way to California right now. But when I looked at your when I go back to look at your YouTube page, it looked like you drove to California before. So they got they they got you on a they got you on a, a dedicated route OTR what, what's going on I when I signed up with Swift I told them I wanted to be OTR all 48 mm-hmm. uh, right now they had me just west you know they had me in California uh, I went to Nevada the other day uh, and then back down to Arizona and now back on up to California but. I, I talked to a couple of the Swift drivers. They told me that they usually do that to keep you close to where all the terminals are, like where majority of the terminals are, and just in case you need anything or anything happens. Uh, he's like, give it a couple of weeks, and they're going to start branching you out, you know, more east. Okay. So. Okay, that's what's up. Tell them don't send you up to the east coast, man. Tell them that. Tell them I don't, tell them tell them I'm not fucking with the East Coast. <laughs> tell them not the East Coast, but the Northeast. The Northeast. My, the, East Coast. the East Coast is good. Yeah, Northeast. Northeast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Northeast. Tell them you don't want to fuck with the Northeast, man. All right. So, man, Nevada. I, you know, I got in uh, the. I, I my got first trip out was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my first trip out. I'm my mentor's truck. Was to New York. <laughs> First trip, I would never go to New York again. I don't ever want to load to New York. <laughs> y'all, y'all went to y'all, y'all went to New York State or New York City? New York City. <laughs> I can imagine. What, what what was the what was the experience yeah, down yeah, there, perfect. man? Tell 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 the tale. What 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 was the experience down there in uh, New York City, man? Well, for one, it's tight. You know, you, you can hardly maneuver. You can barely maneuver a 53-foot trailer, you know, in regular conditions, you know. But then you have people walking out in front of you, not caring if they get hit or anything. It's just cars cutting in front of you. It, it, yeah, it was it was experience. It was definitely, definitely not a good experience. I, I, I'll leave it at that. It was it was a tough drive for you. You Did you have to make the drive or did your, did your mentor – uh, make the drive. I had to. I had to make the drive. Oh, okay. So we we didn't start team until after my fifty out. We had to drive first fifty. Uh, so I made that whole drive, did the whole back end into those little tight, small docks where you have no area to really pull up and try to correct yourself. So. So it was pretty much a one shot and done. If you not, if you don't get it in that one shot, you're not going to get it. Yeah, pretty much. At least the place that I went to. I, I've been in I've been in similar situations like that back in the day, man. It was 
it, it, it was either get it was either get that first setup right and get it in, or you just don't get it at all, man. I mean, there was a couple of places that I had to that I literally had to call back and be like, "Yo, I I can't do it." Well, you got to deliver. No, I don't got to do nothing. I can tell you what I can do. You can send a, a, a more experienced driver at the time. You can send them and then I'll relay or, you know, repower with them. But as as of right now, I I can't do it. I don't want to tear up shit, you know, and I, I'll just continue to move on. So I had a few of those. I had a few of those, man. That's, I, a, that's another thing, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's another thing too. Is that your CDL is your livelihood. If you mess up your CDL, you know you, you can't drive no more. So exactly. I always, me personally, I'm not gonna put myself in a situation where I have to mess up my CDL for any company. Exactly. You got, and a lot of people don't realize that, but the ones that do makes them the makes them the good drivers, man. So right now, you on you on ten heading to California right now, huh? Yeah. So what you after you uh after you okay. make your drop after you make your dr- You what? Yeah, I'm about fifty miles from the uh California Arizona border. Oh, okay, okay. So when you get out to California, man, you gonna you gonna try to take in the sites while you out there or they go to, or they got another little plan for you when you get out there? Uh, when I get out there, uh, I'm gonna have like 13 hours left on my 70. Um, I got to get new tires for my uh, my drive, uh, my drive axle. So I'm gonna uh, just go ahead and do my 34 and go to the terminal. Okay. Uh, see what so, I can do. So uh, I might go to Europa Valley. That's where the terminal is. All right, all right, and go ahead and take a Uber out and 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 take in the sights of California while you're out there. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, that's what's up. That's how you do it, man. Don't let don't don't let this trucking game uh truck you, man. You truck the game. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, I I I got in I got into it, and the only three places that you're gonna see is the or four the terminal, shipper, receiver, and and the truck stops. You know what I'm saying? But this year I I flipped the script on it this year, man. So I started taking staycations on my 34s you know what i'm saying you know i when i go home at the end of the week i go i, I go had I, I just have them to like yo send me to such and such city and then i'll just do my 34 there man so that's how you do it all right man well um man so about a couple of uh about a couple of months in How's uh how's your family taking taking you uh trucking, man? I mean, you know, when you went to go tell them that, hey, I'm about to get into a truck, uh what how how did they take it? Uh it's kinda mixed. My mom, she knows me because she knows I like I like change. So me, you know, driving different states, seeing different things, that's perfect for me. <laughs> so she's happy with it. Uh, one of my sisters, they're happy with it. My other sister though. Um, she she don't like it. She don't like it too much. What? She she's been uh, sending me like Indeed jobs on on on, on jobs and stuff. I've been been trucking. I'm like, I'm good where I'm at right now. She she's trying to get she's trying to get you out of it, huh? <laughs> is it because uh is it yeah. is it because of the uh, of the of the virus or she just don't like it? Period. I think it's more uh has to do with, you know, me being gone, you know, because I told her when I first came out, you know, I'm going to try to be gone at least, you know, five to six weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. I think it's the time that I'll be gone. And, like, we're, we're a close family. You know, all we have is just us, us four, uh, my mom, my dad, and my two sisters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a close family. So I think that hearing that six weeks gone and then driving at the same time, uh, especially the semis, how dangerous this is. You know, if you're not paying attention uh, to your surroundings and everything, it can be very dangerous. Right. Uh, I think with all that surrounding everything, that's that's probably why she she doesn't want me to do it. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, I mean, you know, 
it is what it is, man. We, you know, it's it's a dangerous field that that we're in, and you know, it's it's all about safety, pretty much. You know, all about safety, all about paying attention, all about all about doing what you need to do to make sure that you come back home safe, man. So you work for Swift Transportation, man, and and you already know some of the <laughs> some of the uh, backlash that that particular company get. How do you feel about how, how do you feel about yeah. how, how, how do you feel about everybody talking about the company? I mean, what the company, you know, what the company do for you per se? But how do you feel about everybody talking about the company like that? I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion, of course. You know, we live in a free country where you can say what you want to say. Um, you can't. A lot of a lot of uh, the backlash comes back. Oh, Swift drivers are unsafe and this and that, and that that really has nothing to do with the company. It has to do with the driver. You know, a lot of this stuff is common sense. I mean, you know, you're not supposed to overspeed when you're turning, and you know, you're supposed to get out and look when you're backing in. I mean, that has to do with the driver, really, when it comes down to it. Okay. I mean, the company, you know, they train you just the same as any trucking school would do. Uh, they do the same thing. They give you the same manual. Uh, only thing probably different is the trucking schools. They probably give you like many tips and, and secrets and stuff like that. But the basic curriculum is still the same, you know, as any state mandated PDL. School. Uh, so, I mean, it really comes down to just the drivers. You know, if the drivers are, are doing what they're supposed to, that's what it comes down to. But I mean, I I don't really pay too much attention to it. Obviously, if I'm I still chose Swift. Um, I did my research before I, you know before everything too. You know, it was between Swift Prime and um, Schneider, and I just chose to go with Swift. Okay. You know, Prime, they're they're a good company. Um, it's just it wasn't for me. You know, their their training was too long. I wanted to get on my own. You know, be solo. You know, them, you got to drive 30,000 miles and go through two weeks on the, on, the, on the road before you can take your CDL. And I mean, which is good, but it just wasn't for me. You know, how how, how many miles was it for for Swift uh, when you was out with a mentor? Because, mentor, because, uh, because with, with Prime, it's a little bit over 50. Is it? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, um, it's it's over. Is yeah, it's two hundred hours. Uh, it's two hundred hours within. Yeah, it's it's a little bit over fifty fifty thousand miles with uh with Prime, and if you get into a situation depending on uh depending on the severity of that situation, you probably might have to end up doing another twenty thousand or another ten thousand. So yeah, you you out with a you out with a trainer. Uh, you out with a trainer for quite a while. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you're going to be out with a trainer for quite a while. I'll say with, with my... Yeah, with my, with my 200 hours, um, I had about 20,000 miles with my, with my uh, 200 hours, but we were running. You know, once we hit team, once we hit uh, team status, we, we, had, we never was, was out of load. You know, that's what I say with teams, you know, you're constantly moving. The only time you're not moving is when you, you know, you need one of you get hours. So we were constantly moving. That's why I got my, um, I ended up getting my two, 200 hours in about three and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. But I had to wait another half a week, another couple of days to get routed back to where I could upgrade. So I ended up with about 220 miles, 220 uh, hours. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Well, uh, trucker doc man thank you very much for coming on uh, really do appreciate it yeah, thanks for having me thanks for having me you know what i'm saying what do you what do you uh what 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 uh what advice you know being that you're a new driver and everything man what advice do you give for these uh new jacks that's coming out that's coming in your same situation man I would definitely say your first year driving a truck, do not look to make money. You know, 
during your experience. Wait, wait, stop. Hold up, hold up, bro. Hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Say that again so they can understand. In the first year, what? Do not look to come out to make a whole bunch of money. Look, your first year is gonna be for your experience. That's, you know, that's, exactly. that's, what, that's, that's what's gonna make you the money in your first year. Exactly, man. Exactly. And that's and that is one to grow on. Don't don't come out here expecting all that money. You know, they're gonna, you know, you got YouTubers and stuff like that. You got these uh uh recruiters and stuff like that 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 try to sugarcoat you to come into the game talking about you want to make all this money in the first year and it never happens so don't don't expect that just expect your experience to grow in the first year man all right so if you guys is interested in coming on to the lockout man podcast show i do appreciate you just hit me up in the lockout man podcast at gmail.com there's a cop out here just rolling in the parking lot looking for somebody. Man, this this messed me up right all right all that man. <laughs> okay, anyway, back back to it. Uh, <laughs> check me out on Instagram at Lockout Men. Y'all can DM me them DM me over there too if you want to come on to the Lockout Men podcast show. I want to thank everybody for watching, everybody for listening. I want to thank my special guest uh, Trucker Doc for coming on. If you guys like this video, make sure you like it. If you like the content. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I don't know who I'm going to get to play me out, but we're going to have somebody to play me out because I got, you know, I got new music that's coming in. So I'm going to have, going to have somebody to play me out. Why they playing me out? You guys have a blessed one. Y'all take it easy. And I will come back at you guys with another video. Peace. I'm gonna dance